Hello everybody and welcome back. We are now on to episode 3 and we are finally ready to leave Barbado. We got word that we should be heading north on towards Mania so we can find out a little bit more information about what is going on in Asteria. Mania is a very short distance away from Barbado and all I really need to do to get there is just to follow the path north. There's a couple of little twists and turns along the way, but very, very easy to get to. And if you're not confident fighting, it's also very easy to avoid the enemies, which I'm going to do right now. As I mentioned in the last video when the battle system was introduced, they're not going to really give us any sort of worthwhile experience or gold at the moment. But we will be doing some fighting later on. In order to get to the front entrance of Mania, you have to go north and snake around the wall in order to get to the town entrance. If you try to go north into the field, Julius here will stop you and he mistakes us for a kid. This is completely optional, but this allows you to add Julius to your notebook and he's just going to tell us a little bit about how the northern fields are dangerous and that we should be staying in Mania and pretty much a little bit about what we've already heard. We heard a little bit of that when we were in Barbado. Now that we're in Mania, we're going to speak to a couple more people, of course, but the first thing I'm going to do is talk to a very special character. What I'm going to do first is I'm just going to go east towards this building here. This is the clinic, and I'm going to wait for... Oh! I gotta catch him before he leaves. I'm gonna wait for this guy here, Dr. Claus, to come out of the house. And you wanna make sure to catch him. He's in an awful hurry to go somewhere. But he is one of the only missable characters in this game. If you don't catch him early enough, you'll miss the opportunity to add him to your notebook. There is an opportunity to add him later on. I do believe he's going to Zepic Village at the moment and you can speak to him there. But unless you're really going through the game with a fine-toothed comb and talking to everybody, you might actually miss the opportunity to talk to Dr. Claus in Zepic as well. So be absolutely certain that you catch him on his way out of Mania. And now that that is done, Mania is pretty much our oyster. We can do whatever it is that we want. We, of course, were told by Slav to come to Mania and just check things out. And this is probably Asteria's biggest town, so there's quite a few people to talk to and a couple of really important sort of places and landmarks. So let's just start talking to people. I do believe this was the little boy I ran into, so that's fine. I think I'm going to start talking to people at the start of the town and then make my way around sort of counterclockwise. On the other side of the Northern Pass, there's a huge bowl-shaped crater. Seems to be where the thieves are coming from. Guess they made their hideout there. We're gonna hear a lot about these so-called thieves in this area. Have you seen a one-eyed man around? His name is Donus. Damn fool, he's down and out right now, so he's been neglecting his work, and he's run off somewhere to boot. A name we're gonna have to keep in mind, we'll go speak to Donus. And Tabitha here is the daughter of the mayor of Zepic Village, the third town in this game, and she says that her father's acting a little bit suspicious. He was all like, the villagers mustn't hear of this. Please, if you go to Zepic Village, would you talk to him for me? We will be doing that, another thing to sort of add to our to-do list. Buck here will tell us about the mine, the extremely powerful monsters, and we don't want to go there. We should probably heed his word. That's an area we're not going to be going to for a long time anyways. This little boy here, Johan, is a little bit depressed that he can't go outside and play anymore because monsters are outside the cities. I do believe that uh, the children in Barbado had a similar complaint. This building here to the westernmost side of Mania is the item shop. This is owned by Pim. And we're not going to do anything with him right now, but this is a really important location. This is the only sort of item shop in the game. 
and it's one of the only locations that you can come to sell valuable gems and other items that you find out in your adventures. So let's carry on here. We'll just keep going this way. So some new information coming up, some old information obviously is just telling us a little about the monsters, which we already know about. Obviously we've seen them for ourselves out on the world map. This guy is Freddy, and we spoke to his mother in Barbado. I keep trying to tell her to move in with me since it's so much safer inside the city walls, but she won't listen. Uh oh. I'm like sandwiched between these two. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get out. That's going to be kind of a problem. I don't want to be stuck. I don't think I've ever had that happen before. There we go. Okay, just took a little bit of time. Didn't want to be stuck in there forever. I've got more people to talk to. Sarah has been acting rather odd lately. She's been going on and on about the world coming to an end. Hmm. That's not good. So Sarah is another name that we have to sort of uh, keep in mind. We already talked to these people. I think we already went into that house. Not long ago, I saw a stranger in town wearing a black cape with a real peculiar pale blue glow to it. Maybe I was just seeing things, I don't know, but it still gave me the shivers either way. And if you didn't try to go out into the field before you entered Minia, you can still have Julius in your notebook by speaking to him in town. So there's not a missed opportunity if you want to talk to him there instead. My grandpa often tells me Asterian fairy tales. My favorite one is the one about the silver sword used to defeat the army of monsters a long time ago. This building here is where we're going to need to go in order to advance the story, so we're going to skip that for now. And just continue on in regular fashion here. We're very fortunate to have Dr. Claus in our city. His potions really hit the spot. Anytime there's an emergency, he's always there in a flash. He's a true hero to us all. So they sing the praises of Dr. Claus, similar to how they sang the praises of the doctor back in Barbados as well. I saw this really sculpted, scrumptious looking man the other day, real debonair too with his black cape. But when he looked at me, I swear I was scared out of my mind. His eyes were almost inhuman. Hearing a couple of rumors about the man with the cape as well. When the monster started attacking, a lot of people moved here from Raston and Barbado Port. And yeah, Mania is protected by walls, but we can't just shut ourselves away in here, we've got to fight back. And of course, Rastin was completely wiped out by the monsters. They decided to take home there, and completely wiped that place off the map. A lot of refugees in this time as well. Bad timing with the storm wall and all. On a day like this, when the weather is good, you can see Darm Tower clear as anything from the town's ramparts. It's amazing that our ancestors were able to build a tower that stretches up beyond the clouds. And on the southernmost part of the map, we have our weapon and our armor shop. We don't really have enough money to buy anything right now, though, so we'll skip that for now. Ever since the silver mine on the mountain was closed, the cost of everything has risen so dramatically. Still, it's not like we could actually sell any of our silver goods, what well, the storm wall and all. Yeah, that pesky storm wall, it's really putting a damper into people's lives. Now we'll explore the eastern side of town. We've got a couple of buildings. One here is the tavern. There's a lot of people here to talk to. Ricardo mentions a harmonica playing poet girl who hangs out around the ramparts. We haven't met her yet, but we will. She's real purdy, and that song of hers is also real purdy. It's mesmerizing. Haven't heard it in a while, though. So that's yet another person to keep in mind as we go along here. And we've been gathering a lot of really, really good information, so just keep that in mind. Have you visited the fortune teller's house? She may be young, but she's good. If you're ever in need of advice or guidance, she can always set you on the right path. You might be able to guess at the fortune tellers where we're going to go for the story. 
We're gonna be skipping that for now, like I mentioned, but we will be going there soon. We get to sort of meet this elusive storyteller sometime soon. And Chest mentions a scholar that went to investigate Darm Tower. That's gonna come into play much, much, much later in the game. Some of these things aren't too important. Um, some of them are scripted to happen, so it's not too important for you to remember a minuscule detail such as that right now. You can walk up to this group of three men. We have the bartender, the muscular man, and the one-eyed man to speak to. Let's start with the bartender. Ah, a new face. From whence did you come, sir? Barbado, you say. Ah, you're the lad who crossed the storm wall then. I heard about you from members of the Barbado military when they came here on their rounds. Sorry if I sounded a bit suspicious when I asked you where you were from. Lately there have been a lot of break-ins, so I thought maybe you were casing my establishment. No sir, I wouldn't dream of it. And the muscular man next, his name is Garrick. I've been hired by the city to track down those dirty thieves. And we can have a drink with him to learn a little bit more. Ain't learned much about the crooks, but I did find out that long ago there were rota trees in Asteria. Never heard of a rota tree before. Its seeds are said to be one of the finest delicacies in the world. I'd love to taste one just once before I die. Don't suppose you've come across any, have you? Well, not yet, but we may or may not come across one later. And then finally we have the one-eyed man. This is Donus. We did hear his name mentioned a little bit earlier. Somewhere in this general area, I lost a beautiful sapphire ring I'd purchased as a gift for my wife. Without it, I feel as if I can't even face her. Damnable thieves! I'll wager this is their doing. It may not be their doing. He, someone did mention that the shopkeeper was selling a ring in his store. Again, something that requires us to investigate a little bit, and we will be doing that shortly. And I promise we only have a couple of more houses to explore. We've almost completely looked this place over. The bats that come out from the mine at twilight aren't normal. They ferociously attack both humans and livestock. They were the primary culprit in the destruction of Raston. Oh, that's terrifying. We used to live in Raston Village until the monsters raced it to the ground anyway. Well, I'm glad you managed to find another home, but uh, that's rather tragic. When the bats are gone, can we go back to Raston? Unfortunately not. And then this is the clinic that Dr. Claus came out of. Here we have a nurse. This is Nurse Lisa. And just like if we want to speak to Ayla, we can get some healing or medication. And we can also talk to Lisa. It's been quite busy in here ever since the monsters started showing up. People are always getting hurt. Dr. Claus went to make a house call at Zepic Village since they have no medical facility or staff there. Wow, sucks not to have any doctors or nurses or anything. And in order to fill up your notebook, you can go ahead and speak to the four injured people in the hospital. Old Man Mash here will tell us his story of how he was robbed. One of the thieves came and took some of his valuable silver stuff, his silver shield that has been in his family for generations. So again, just telling us a little bit more about these thieves that seem to be robbing everybody. That guy was attacked by a rabel which is the same enemy that had attacked Adol when he had washed up on shore in Barbado. Very dangerous uh, creature. Theodore here will tell us a little bit more about ray wolves. Apparently these things are a force to be reckoned with and we really have to watch ourselves. So we're gonna keep that in mind as we venture onto the world map. And he escaped with his life, so that's good. Hopefully he has a speedy recovery. And then finally, Braun here is not uh, conscious, so he can't really say much to us. And it's completely optional to speak to those guys. Again, if you're not going for a completionist sort of ranking, then talking to them obviously is not going to be very important. The very last person we need to speak to is the girl that hangs out by the ramparts that was mentioned by the patron at the bar. 
And as we can tell by her portrait, she seems to be a very important character. This is Rhea. She is a poet and a troubadour, and her priceless silver harmonica has been stolen. I value it nearly as much as my own life. A lot of silver things seem to be getting stolen. Have you guys noticed that? Silver shield, silver harmonica, and a couple of other items as well have kind of seemed to have mysteriously gone missing. We've heard a little bit about these thieves in the area, so that's going to need to be investigated. We've also heard of this fortune teller that we have to go and see, and a couple of other things. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on. So by exploring Mania, we've actually created ourselves quite a laundry list of things to kind of get started with. So we are going to continue on in Mania in the next video. Thank you all so very much for watching and I hope that I will see you next time.